So if you have Tesla solar and power walls, you owe it to yourself to set up a dedicated tracking center just like this. And all it is, it's just an iPad on a phone stand. You can see I just kind of um, tidied up the wires a little bit and just put it on the phone stand and it looks pretty good, nice and neat in the kitchen. But you may notice one thing that I'm not actually using the Tesla app. If you're familiar with the Tesla app, it does look a little bit different. It looks like this instead of this. And you can use the Tesla app on a tablet. It basically looks like this, but blown up. But connecting directly to your Tesla Energy Gateway like this is much more um, efficient and it's much more accurate. I found out over time if you use the Tesla app, the numbers will just kind of like freeze and they won't change. This is actually the most accurate up-to-date thing. And if you want to know how to like actually set this up, it's very simple. Um, I'm going to link in two instructions on Tesla's website. You literally just connect directly to the Tesla Energy Gateway Wi-Fi access point and then you navigate to a specific IP address or address and then you log in and it's good to go. And your username and password, your username is your Tesla email address, your password. For me, it's the serial number off of your power walls, which can be found in your Tesla app or even in your Tesla Energy Gateway behind the door. Okay, this is kind of a life hack. Once you get all logged into the Tesla Energy Gateway by connecting to the Wi-Fi and then going to that IP address right there, if you're on an iPad, you can just add a um, link to your home screen. So if you do add to home screen, right there. So it's literally right here on my home screen. So you just click it. So there's nothing crazy you have to do. You literally just click that every time. The only thing you have to make sure, you have to make sure you're connected to the Tesla Energy Gateway every time because that's how you get the information. Um, also, Tesla recommends that you keep it on airplane mode as well, just to make sure you're not getting any other types of data to interfere with it. And then two, obviously you can zoom in like this to make it look more visually pleasing. And then the address bar, you know, you can zoom it up and down. Not an exact science, you can kind of just customize it however you want, like that. But overall, this will work as long as you're um, display is set on do not time out. So, you know, if you have an iPad or whatever, you just go in to display right here and then have it set to auto lock never because you basically just want it to stay on all the time. And I do notice if you leave, it refreshes and goes back down, which is kind of annoying. But as long as you don't touch it, which in theory, this should just be a dedicated device for displaying your information. As long as nobody touches it, it's good. Like I've had this run overnight. The next day it looked just the same. So it was perfect. And I have mine in the kitchen because I actually like, you know, doing stuff with my appliances. So like right now I'm brewing, brewing coffee and then you can look on the iPad and you can see that we're getting more power to the house because the coffee pot is brewing. And so the kitchen is literally the area in your house where you use the most electricity. So like say if we turn on the oven, you know, all the burners, cause we're getting ready to cook a Thanksgiving dinner. We're starting the oven. We got the air fryer going. We got the toaster oven going over here. We're getting a ton of power from the grid right now. And yes, you know, we can change this to self power mode as well. So we could change that to self-powered mode and it will automatically change here. So just give it a few seconds. And now like instantaneously, you can see the power walls are powering the house. The solar is powering the house and we're, we're good. Like even with everything going. So it's pretty amazing to monitor that. And just to remind you, like we're running the toaster oven, we're running the air fryer, we're running all of these burners and the stove. But uh, that's a waste of electricity. I just wanted to demonstrate. So let's turn all that off. And then of course, you know, just as quick, it's updated. The house is bar barely using any energy. The solar is going back to powering the power walls. My coffee is done. And I can top it off with some more ice. 
So I just cut access to the grid because I want to show you what it looks like when you lose grid power. It's very instantaneous, you know right away. I think that's very important because if you lose grid power, you want to monitor your energy usage. You don't want to be cooking on the stove like we were doing before. You don't want to be doing laundry. You know, depending on your solar energy and how many power walls you have, you definitely want to conserve. So like right now, you can see the solar power actually turned off. That's a really good use of this system. You can monitor everything. The reason for that, when you lose a grid power, your power walls are your grid. So my power walls are at 100% already. So my house has to deplete the power walls before the solar power can come back on. Right now, in theory, if you were having a really sunny day, now would be a great opportunity to just like use energy. So you could do the dishes, you could um, cook some just to drain this a little bit. But I just wanted to demonstrate how it looks to lose grid power on this. It looks like this on your Tesla app. But in theory, this would work better if you had a super catastrophic storm that cut power to the cell towers and the internet. This probably would not work in that case. This would be way more accurate and give you the ability to monitor everything way better. Also too, another reason that this is great, since it's always running in there, you can always take a look at your Tesla power walls because they have no screen on them themselves. But a big, big, big reason why you want to connect directly to your Tesla Energy Gateway, if you lose power and happen to lose internet and happen to lose cell signal, this is connected directly to it. So you don't need anything like that. So when you need it most, you can still monitor your power on your power walls. Another thing too, if you ever have friends and family over, this is kind of a great conversation piece. They come into your kitchen, they're like, oh, what is that? You know, you can kind of explain to them that you have solar panels on your roof, you have power walls in your garage, and all of the lights that are powering this house right now are being powered by renewable energy. This whole meal I cooked for you is powered by renewable energy. The drink that you got out of the fridge is powered by renewable energy. It's just pretty cool. It's a good conversation piece. It kind of makes it more open and public versus the phone in your pocket. Because you know, it's like, only I have access to this. I think it's so cool that the whole house and everybody in the house should be able to see the capabilities of it. And I wouldn't suggest, you know, buying a brand new tablet for this. It's 2021, at this point, I feel like all of us has an extra tablet, an extra phone, something just hidden in a drawer. It doesn't have to be the latest and greatest. It just has to have a web browser. You know, this isn't even an app, it's just the internet. So as long as it's got Wi-Fi and a browser, you should be good to go. Repurpose an old tablet or device. Put it in your kitchen, put it to use. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to watch two of my other videos right here and here. Subscribe to my channel, I'll put my face right here. Like the video, do all those good things. Bye.